we're here with the Blue Eddy EL200 V2 unboxing. Uh, this is a 2073 watt hour energy storage capacity and 2600 power capacity. And we're gonna just unbox it here. Should be quick and easy and then test it out. I think I will pause the camera to help him get the box out here. Yeah? So now we've got the, the box out of the box. <clears throat> so V2, of course, is a version two. Bluetti has been updating a bunch of their energy storage, portable energy storage products, power, power stations, um, as they just continue to improve the tech. All right, we got the accessories box here, some cords, cables. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> It's like Christmas, no? <laughs> and now the big now, do boy. Do you know how much the, this weighs? I do not know how much it weighs. Right, we'll it's uh, it's, it it's heavy, but not too heavy, is how I, <laughs> how I would quantify it. Uh, I can, look it yeah. All right, I was thinking it might be 30 or 40 pounds. He says 50, what was it? 50? 53.4. 53.4. Handles on the top. He obviously does his proper gym work there, just yanked it out and uh, there you go. That's a simple unboxing. And here's a beautiful new power station with uh, USB-C, USB-A, USB-A, USB-C ports, DC-AC, uh, 12 volt, 10 amp port, <clears throat> and uh, 12 volt, 60, 12 volt, 60 volt, 20 amp, 1000 watt. DC PV input port there. So you got the DC output, DC input, and then AC output, the normal plugs. Uh, there more. <clears throat> so this side is how you charge it, I assume. Here we go. Here's the, yeah, the uh, AC input port for charging it, just like we've got on other portable power stations. So one thing I love about the Blue Eddy systems is they're so intuitive, they're so simple to use. Some of these port po portable power stations have been a, a little confusing sometimes. You, you you can take a while to figure out how to operate them. Right. But Blood is just very intuitive. So he just turned it on there with that on button and it's already charged at 54%. Nice UI you know, user interface here with DC input, DC output, AC input, AC output, which is very clear and intuitive. So easy to use, not, not extra buttons you gotta find. Uh, just turn it on. And uh, yeah, we'll try testing out, charging it up now. So we just plugged it into the normal electricity outlet here, charging on AC power. And sorry, already, yeah, we just plugged in like a few seconds ago, it's up to 55%, 1,444 watt input. It's pretty good, yeah. happy with that? It's good. Any uh, any initial thoughts or you were happy with the, the weight? Very, the weight was fine, it was balanced, nice with the handles. Yeah. Um, it's, it came out with power already. Uh, we can look at the, the outputs. We'll be looking at the output to see what kind of voltage we have. And we can hook up and see what the current were. But the, one, the other one I was looking at, it came with an app. So you could look at everything right. on the phone. I don't know about yeah. this one though. Oh, there's a thing right here. Yeah, here it is. So you, you just scan that to get the app. Just went up to 56. Maybe I'll just leave this on for a moment to see how long it takes to get to 57, 58. <clears throat> Since we have actual, can track the time here on the video. Good to leave it at about 50% charge in storage, of course. Um, less of an issue with you know, modern batteries, but still, it's always, always better. So just scan the barcode and he'll get the app so you can monitor it so 57 so it took less than a minute or about a minute to get to 50 percent so 57 percent charge adds about a percent a minute <clears throat> have you used the app before have you downloaded it before? okay so this will be first testing with the app and uh, yeah, quite a lot of power and energy capacity for such a small, a lot, a lot is packed in here. 2,600 watts and 2,073 watt hours is quite 
quite a package for this um, this size. It's not complicated, so there's not much more to say, <laughs> not much more about it. We'll, of course, test out the ports and see how it does, but I uh, just want to see it get one more percent, which should be happening in the next 10 seconds or 20 seconds or so. And uh, there it is. So it took about one minute again. Uh, about exactly a minute for 1% to be added. Okay. So it's been exactly 30 minutes and we've gone from now 54% to 75%. So now that's, that's less than 1% a minute, which initially was what it was showing. 30 minutes exactly and it's gone 21% from 54% to 75%. And now we're gonna, we're gonna try uh, plugging it into the house. Okay, so I'm I gonna, should say we're going to try plugging the house into it. It's already plugged into the house, but now we're going to go. I'll plug in some items to it. Reverse. Also okay. Amperage and see how. Yeah, we'll start with wise. start with some smaller items, and see what happens. Blow dryer. There we go. And I'm going to do an amp draw on it as well. This is good. Output voltage. Look at this. We are prepared for proper testing. This is what happens when you get an engineer on, on ground. So AC is on and we have 120 volts sitting there nice and tight. We are still charging. Now I want to disconnect the power because we want to let it run on its own. So we'll disconnect from the incoming house of power. We have two items here. We have a hair dryer, pull about 13 amps. We'll start with that, and we'll have drill pull a couple more amps. We're pulling 13 amps. Both need to stay steady at 119 volts. And the AC output is 1600. So we're going to up that a little bit. We'll add a drill to this. So we just have the inches in the watch now. Yeah. And that's so that's 1800 out of a possible max of 2600. So we'll add to that. It's going hardcore here with the testing. We're going to see if we can get to the max. <laughs> Are we ready? Just under 2,000. All right, so we've got, um, it's not a whole house back up here. We've got, it's a four circuit manual transfer switch. Yeah, we'll that, let him do the talking. <laughs> four, four output manual transfer switch that we've installed. They're 15 amps, but you can handle up to 20 amps if needed. And what we can do is we can we choose four circuits in the house that we want to keep power to in case of emergency. And that's how it's been wired. So it's been wired to the internet, the living room, refrigerator, and the master bedroom. And the master bedroom includes a portable air conditioner if needed during storms. Which you just plugged in so it's, that, just plugged so it's in, running. So it's drawing power right now. So that we can test it out. <clears throat> so there we go, put the plug in there and then 
and it's unplugged from the wall now. We're not charging it. We're going to switch on to the master bedroom, which is circuit number four. Oh, so we'll try one at a time, yeah? Okay, that makes sense. And now it's going at 155. Once... Oh, that's TV on power. Go okay, so he's going to turn on the AC. We'll see how it's... And it's a portable, you know, pretty affordable portable AC system, but it was really good. We tested this last year and it was really good at, uh, at cooling the, the area of the room. Right now the watts have dropped, so I'm not sure. Shouldn't be turning anything off in there, so. See, uh, probably turned it on now. I feel like now, oh yes, now the AC must have been turned on and it's increased to 230. So is that still just a 230 watt output out of a maximum 2600 uh, with the portable air conditioner and TV running in the master bedroom? Yeah. Power now, right? Yeah, it jumped up to 230, 240. It went down to 100 for a minute. Was Did you turn anything off? Or I turned you... everything on. Okay, it's funny because it dropped from like 140, 150 to 100 for a few moments. And then I could tell when you turned the portable AC on because yeah. it jumped up to 230. Okay, because it delays run and stuff, so. So now it's at 240 out of maximum 2600. Yep, and that's just with the TV and portable air conditioner running in the master bedroom, right? Right. <clears throat> so next we'll add the internet, internet. living room internet living room which has a tv on and refrigerator yeah and that increase turning all those on increased it to 600 watts which is nothing <laughs> well below the 2600 watt max uh, of course it doesn't compare to the Funny experiment we right. had go around in here with the drill and the so I'm still running nice 120 volts there. And we can add on to this now. <coughs> so that jacks it up. And blow dryer. Pretty extreme jacked up to 2000. So the max is 3,600, but it went up to 3,300. 3,300. It was good. But, uh, okay. Co color me slightly confused now, because mm -hmm. the max is 2,600. Right, so it kicked off. It actually held it for about 10, 15 seconds. So it actually, yeah, the actual So it can max... hold it for at the 2,600 mark. However, when it goes above the 2,600, when we pull it all the way up to 3,300, it overloaded and kicked off and it right. we'll have to reset the breaker. Okay, so it kicked itself off, for, yeah. All right, so as long as you stay 2600 or below, it should stay continuous yes. and not not cancel, but you go above it and it kicks it off. It will kick off, there's a, a, there's a switch on the back, <clears throat> reset switch, you reset it. Yeah. Reset switch here. And now we'll reset. be able to use it like new again. The AC thing is blinking, I don't know, I'll turn, press it, and press it again, and yeah, it looks like it's reset. Mm -hmm. And it's on, yeah, 13 yeah. amps ago. We left that on, so now it just came back on. Yeah. All right. Working well. All right, so we'll get a quick summary from you. I, I, you know, to be honest, when I look at the system, I can see the watts, the watt hours, 
but it still feels like, oh, it's not a big thing. You know, it's quite easy to move around, but small. And I was a little concerned, like, is this really gonna back up his, his, his force, his house, the air gonna, you know? And it's just, it's so good. I mean, it's, it's well above, well above what you need and like above 50% of what you need actually. Yeah, the refrigerator, the portable air conditioner, uh, it handled that with no problem. It was well under the 2600. Um, and we finally got it, then we, including the internet that we switched over to, which was instantaneous. And then the, uh, the lights, I put all the lights on in the bedroom as well, the TVs. And that didn't draw much power at all. <laughs> compressor on the air conditioner and compressor on the refrigerator kicked on. They're were, they were working fine. So it's, it held the, the uh, amperage fine. Um, and then when we added the hair dryer and drill, we jumped up to 2000, 2600. We added the jigsaw <laughs> that jumped it over to 3300. It held out for about 10 seconds when it kicked off and had to be reset. Yeah. So it's showing at 2600. She seems to be fine. And to this point, it seems like a nice little unit to, to work with for a home backup system. Yeah, and yeah, to me, it, it surprised me how long it was on 3300 before kicking off. But I, I mean, that's that's good because that's I'm, a good thing. I mean, if something surges or whatever, yeah, if you have a surge, not... you know, we're going to have it. Surge will only last a second too. Yeah. Generally, we get an AC unit, whether it be a, a compressor, whether it be on an AC unit or a refrigerator. There's going to be an instantaneous surge, so you want to have enough. Uh, bias in there so that it kicks in and won't drop off in the air.